All right, we got the homework assignment, finding resultant vectors, more difficult problems, assume all angles are in standard position. George throws a headless doll 100 feet at an angle of 45 degrees. Upon landing, George throws the doll again 225 degrees for 50 feet. What's the resulting vector in polar coordinates? Well, let's take this blue vector and just call that vector A. It's 100 feet. 45 degrees. We want to change those to components, which we will do here shortly. And then we have a vector, we'll call this red one vector B. It is 50 feet at 225 degrees. We would like that also in component form. So vector A, 45 degrees is in quadrant one. It's a special right triangle. If the hypotenuse is 100, the leg is that divided by the square root of 2. Let me just see what that is as a decimal. 100 divided by the square root of 2. That's about 70.71. And both of these legs are the same. So the components for vector A is 70.71 going to the right and going up. Vector B, 225 degrees, is in quadrant 3. That's also a special right triangle, 45, 45, 90. So that means that the legs are 50 divided by the square root of 2. And that is 35.36. you got to be careful about what I just wrote. This is going down for x. I'm sorry, down for y, and it's going left for x. So the components for this are negative 35.36 and negative 35.36. So the resultant vector is going to have components 70.71 plus a negative 35.36 followed by 70.71 plus a negative 35.36. And that resultant is 35.35 in the x and y direction. So then we get to figure out what the angle is. That is interesting. Did I do that correct? Let's see. Yep, definitely did. So then we got to figure out what the angle is and what the magnitude is. So right now we are saying that we have this triangle that we're going to the right, 35.35, and we're going up 35.35. And we want to find the magnitude of this vector, which is the magnitude of the, the diagonal there. We want to find the angle. Hopefully you can see this angle is going to be 45, because we have this right triangle, and both the legs are the same. Put this in your calculator, it's going to give you 45 degrees. And I'll explain why in a moment that that angle comes up again, because that was the beginning of one of the vectors, one of the angles. And then the resultant vector is the square root 
of the x component squared plus the y component squared. Or, I guess, simpler, since we know this is a 45, 45, 90, this little fella here is going to be 35.35 times the square root of 2. And that is about 49.99, almost 50. Now, had we not made some rounding errors as we continued, and we had rounding errors because we have rounded some numbers, this would end up being exactly 50. The resultant vector is 49.99 at 45 degrees. So let me explain once again what happened. If we were to put this all in the same coordinate plane, we had vector A with a magnitude of 100 at 45 degrees. And then we had vector B that had half that magnitude. And it turns out it was going in the exact opposite direction. This 225 makes those two vectors on the same line. So if we have one force, let's say, pulling in this direction with 100 pounds of force, and we have another force here pulling at 50 pounds of force, well, the net result is we're going to go in this direction at 50 pounds of force. We're not talking about pounds and force right now, but that's how it makes the most sense in my brain. So we had we rounded, we rounded here, we rounded here, we rounded here. As a result, this number is not quite as good as it should be. If we had just applied common sense at the beginning, which we may not have built that up yet, we would find this is exactly 50 feet and 45 degrees. Well, let's check out another one, number two. George throws a doll's head 25 feet at an angle of 140 degrees. That is not going to be a special triangle. After running and picking it up, he throws the head again 30 feet at an angle of 200 degrees. What's the resulting vector in polar coordinates? 140 degrees is going to fall into quadrant dose. So this is the vector. 25 feet. We'll call this vector V. And then he has another vector. This one's in quadrant 3. 200 degrees. And that one goes a little bit further, 30 feet. We'll call this vector W for no particular reason. These are not special angles, special right triangles. So we could just use the formulas for the x and y components. For the x component of the vector, we would just take r times cosine of theta, which would be 25 times cosine of 140 degrees. To find the y component, it would be y equals r times sine of theta. And you might notice I'm showing my work differently than I did in the notes. It's intentional just to show you that there's lots of ways to show your work correctly. So using a calculator, 25 times cosine of 140, that is negative 19.15. It makes sense that it's negative or going left. 25 sine of 140 is positive. That also makes sense. We're going up. 16.07. So vector V has components of negative 19.15 and 16. Point zero seven. I'll, I'll do this next one in the more compact version. 
So vector w, that's going to be r cosine of theta followed by r sine of theta. The radius here is 30. Theta is 200. r is 30. Theta is 200. Put this into my calculator. 30 cosine of 200 should be negative. That's negative 28.19. And 30 cosine of 200 is negative 10.26. Both negative because we're going down and to the left. The resultant of this. If we take and add the x components and y components together, it's going to be negative 19.15 and 16.07 plus negative 28.19 and negative See, that's a negative 47.41. If I take negative 16.07 minus 10.26, we get negative 26.33. Now, this is in component form. We would like our answer to be in uh, polar form. To get this in polar form, we have the magnitude followed by the angle. So if I were to check out what this would look like in a coordinate plane, it's going to be in quadrant three because we're going left 47.41 and we're going down. 26.33. To find this magnitude, it's the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. Put that in my calculator. Negative 47.41 plus negative 26.33 squared, and I square root this, it's going to give me 54.23. Now to find the angle, I got to be careful. Because if I put in theta is tangent inverse of the signs would cancel, so I don't need to put the two negatives in. Y over X see what this gives me in my calculator. And we can reason out if this makes sense. Tangent inverse, 26.33 divided by 47.41. Now that gives me 27.17 degrees. Does it make sense that that's this angle here? Absolutely not. I'd be in quadrant one. So that tells me this is the reference angle. So if I want to figure out what this angle is, I have to add that to 180. Theta is going to be 180 plus 27.17 
that's going to be 207.17 degrees. So my answer would be this fella. And that concludes the homework.